Hi everyone, welcome in uh, my new video. Today I'm gonna show you how to repair a uh, Samsung uh, uh, CLP360, 365 and 365W and uh, some very similar models like uh, the C410 and other similar printers where uh, the problem is that they don't pick up the paper but uh, uh, not only they don't pick up paper but they don't even try to attempt uh, to pick up paper. Uh, as you will see now, I will try to, uh, this is just a general error, I think it's an uh, um, imaging unit nearly at the end of its life or something like that. So you can see now the printer is uh, trying to get the paper, but uh, the roller is totally stuck, so you can actually look through here with your eyes and uh, a torch and uh, look if uh, the roller rotates or not. So uh, The most common issue here will be that uh, the printer, like in this case, will not even try to get paper and to pick up paper and uh, um, if you have a different problem than this, so you have uh, pick up problems but uh, the roller rotates and uh, something like that don't even try to attempt this fix because it's uh, most likely a different problem and different issue. So this video is to fix uh, a printer where the exact situation is like this. So the printer will try to print but uh, the roller that um, picks up the paper is totally blocked. Well it's not the pickup roller the problem. The problem is this solenoid. Uh, I discussed this problem in a uh, um, another video that I made and uh, you can actually find the video on my channel it's a shorter video where I just show you what the problem is with these uh, uh, solenoids but uh, but just as an intro of this video uh, this is what happens so when this goes down you can see that it stays down and when this stays up it's it's a bit sticky, so these pads are the main problem here. But uh, uh, the solenoid with without those pads uh, uh, could not work. So I just bought a replacement for around uh, four euros and uh, thirty cents. That is uh, four point fifty US dollars around on AliExpress, and uh, uh, I have tested this on uh, another printer, and it works perfectly. So let's begin the repair. So I just need to remove uh, the paper tray and uh, then you can uh, move the printer to the back like so and disconnect the power cord because uh, we are working here without any um, current attached to the printer. And uh, um, the main problem here, just uh, as a precaution I will say, it's that uh, we're working on this side of the printer and here there's the main input and uh, there's, there's also the um, uh, main power supply so it's a little bit of a problem if you uh, touch that part with uh, the, um, the cable attached uh, that can hurt, that can actually kill you so you have to be careful when uh, operating when, with uh, high voltage and uh, all other different things so now I'm going to just uh, remove these four screws at the back. So at this point I can move the printer like so, so just a little bit off my desk and uh, open this side and uh, um, with the help of uh, a flathead screwdriver, a little um, big one, like so, I'm going to push at the sides and disengage the um, the clips that hold this whole part together and uh, you can see that after you disengage one of them it's pretty easy to remove the other ones and uh, uh, with the top one you can actually do something like this and uh, it will come off so you can easily remove the back cover and uh, you need to remove the back cover in order to do this so you move the printer uh, like so, so, to the front and uh, you open up the cartridge access uh, door so with a very little uh, flathead screwdriver or uh, some tools you just push on this side and remove uh, this little cover here 
this cover uh, let, lets you access to this cable over here and this cable is uh, what connects the whole printer to the uh, cartridges and uh, drum chips recognition system so uh, now you can just uh, do something like this and remove the whole front panel you need to remove the front panel because without removing the front panel it's uh, a lot harder to remove uh, this side panel that is the one that uh, we're working on so pay attention because without the paper tray this could happen and that is very bad so don't want to risk that so you have you have just to unlatch some tabs down here like so and some on the front side too and this will be a little floppy like this then you have to do the same thing that we have done to the back side in order to remove this uh, um, this side panel so at this point we can rotate the printer in this orientation and we can work in an easier way at the top of it and now we have uh, uh, a site on the main board power supply and this is the um, uh, sort of um, an assembly board that connects with the different sensors and different um, parts and motors of the printer so um, here we have to disconnect some things but uh, before we need to unscrew a few screws here because we're not going to remove the logic board but we are going to just uh, mm, well leave it there but tilt it just a bit in order to unscrew a few screws that are underneath it so we'll just remove these screws like so and then we need to disconnect some cables here so uh, these are the cables that we have to disconnect so one is here one is here and these two cables so we route them through here and uh, we let them go this way so now we have to tilt the main board this orientation in order to access two screws uh, underneath it so like I said uh, these screws are uh, here we'll just try to show you in the best way I can so this is the first screw and the other screw is uh, down here it's uh, under here it's uh, a black head screw uh, we'll try just uh, so that is the screw uh, this one over here is the screw that we are going to remove so, as I said, we're going to remove these two screws that are the two main screws that are connected with uh, the paper pickup mechanism. So, just remove these two and now we can get the main board in this position, like so. Okay, so now we have to remove uh, a few screws on the top of the, uh, well, the bottom of the printer. So uh, we'll show you right now. So we have to remove uh, uh, these two and these two. So let's do it real quick. Okay, so at this point you still haven't disconnected the entire part of uh, the pickup system from the printer. You just need to remove uh, two other screws, but uh, you need to be particularly careful with it, because you are next to the fuse unit that is very very hot most of the times after you turn off the printer, and uh, uh, this is the transfer belt, and uh, if you just touch the transfer belt with your screwdriver or anything like that, it will scratch it and uh, if you scratch the transfer belt it will leave permanent damage to it and uh, so permanent marks on your prints and uh, that is a very bad thing. So I need to remove the two screws that uh, you can see I'm now removing and uh, after you remove these two screws now you're free to remove uh, the paper pickup mechanism from your printer. So just route out these cables, but uh, you're not free yet. You're not free yet because uh, uh, here there's a, um, 
um, an end stop sensor that is a switch actually that is connected uh, with uh, the other side of the printer so your options are two you just dismantle the other side of the printer the whole thing and disconnect it or you just unscrew this little screw here and uh, remove the switch and that's what I'm going to do because it's easier and faster and so it's right for our job so just uh, disconnect this uh, end stop sensor and here there's our paper pickup and management uh, system so let's take this on the desk and take the printer at one side because we're not working on here for now as I said this is the paper pickup mechanism and this is the side we're working on and you can see here the infamous solenoid so you just need to do a few things so uh, the first thing you have to remove uh, these gears okay so now you remove this gear but you can see it's uh, locked in place so uh, in order to remove it you have to disengage uh, two clips on uh, each side of the gear so you need to do something like this and uh, so the gear will come off like so so at this point you can just remove this screw and now the solenoid should be pretty free to move well not so free but uh, at least disconnected from the other side of uh, the printer so the problem here is that the solenoid cable is uh, here and uh, it's stuck sort of saying so we are just taking this out of here way out of here okay and uh, at this point we should be pretty free to remove uh, the solenoid if uh, this will be stuck I will have to remove also this gear and uh, that is not very funny to do, but yeah, we can do it. And yeah, I think we need to remove or just mm, disengage just a bit that uh, um, that gear. And uh, in order to do that, you need to remove uh, this O-ring over here. Okay, then uh, remove just a bit this and uh, pull this out. And now uh, this solenoid is free to come off. Yeah, so this is the infamous solenoid we need to remove. And uh, this is the new replacement. So let's route this cable inside here. Okay. And then uh, we need to uh, just take this solenoid inside this orientation this fixed points and so we need to get this screwed in and that fits perfectly as you can see it's not locked in place it's free to move that is fine so now we can take this back this has to engage inside here and then we have to take the o-ring and uh, get it on here okay so now this is locked in place okay so now let's get this inside here this should be like so you can see it's a uh, uh, spring loaded uh, uh, gear and that it's the way it should work so if it doesn't you, you should be uh, in a problematic situation so let's get this inside and uh, push it down push this solenoid down before you get this inside here so now this should be in this way okay so at this point uh, uh, getting the gears inside is pretty easy because you can see that the gears oh well this is the correct one but you can see that uh, um, different gears doesn't line up perfectly uh, as an example this is a, a kind of thread that is different to this so it's obvious that this goes inside here this way and this it's pretty obvious that goes inside here this way and everything moves fine now 
this shouldn't move because the solenoid isn't engaged now. So you need to route this cable here, like so. And uh, our solenoid is uh, pretty much installed in place now. So let get, let's get the printer back and uh, install this part inside of the printer and see if it works. Uh, let's uh, reconnect this switch before I forget this. So this goes uh, in this direction. Okay. And uh, you need to get uh, the little screw inside the other side of the switch. Perfect. So now you need to uh, get this part in this direction and uh, just reconnect it inside of the printer like so. Now you can get this back and uh, get some screws in okay so we need two other screws inside here in this compartment okay so that is in place so now we can route these cables where we remove them and uh, that was easier before screwing the printer part back, but uh, yeah, we can do it. It's not so hard. So if you route these cables before you screw everything in, it's uh, very, very easier. But uh, it's not so hard either, so... And there it is. So now we can just uh, twist these three cables like that and uh, get this twisted too. It was like that from the factory, so it should be like this. Okay, and so we reconnect everything in place. So this here, this. Are you seeing what I'm doing? Not so much. I was just reconnecting this cable, so I just connected this one and I will connect this one too. This should go like so, okay. Then this here and this goes here. Okay, it's pretty much done now. So, what we need to do next is to just uh, uh, take back those black screws inside where we removed them uh, it's pretty easy just getting them inside here and I already shown you where did I remove those screws so I will not do that again okay so let's get the main board back in place that have to line up with all the different parts. Let's get the screws down right inside. Okay, so let's get this old broken solenoid out of the way. So let's get the printer back on this side and uh, get the side panel back on. Just need to do something like this. You connect first the top side and then this should just connect like this okay so now you need to get the back panel installed and uh, Okay, and uh, this should connect like so, okay, and this side too, okay, fine, I'll get the screws back, okay, so now we can rotate the printer, and uh, get the front panel installed, 
So you just get this in here and uh, get the two sides inside here and uh, lock it up. So you reconnect the cable for the chips management. Uh, come on, okay. And then this black cover right here. So you just connect first the right side and then the left side. So you got the paper tray back and uh, it's reassembled now. So let's power this printer up and see if it works. It's common when you use a, a low quality toner cartridges that at the first time you will not recognize a few of them. But it's not the case, actually. So let's try a test print. And actually, didn't take the paper. Well, it half take the paper. Maybe this sheet was a bit dirty, or just a bit damaged, or this was not in place correctly. Let's see if it works now. Okay, now it works. It was just a broken or bent sheet, I think, of paper. And uh, yeah, you can see that uh, we have 10% left remaining at the transfer unit, the belt transfer unit. But this printer works uh, actually, so I will replace the transfer unit, of course, before selling it. But, but you can see that if I just uh, do another test page or another different test, We'll just get the sheets of paper without any problem whatsoever. And uh, prints pretty fine actually. So you have already seen that. So it takes the paper without any problem after my repair. So uh, if you need this particular repair, I will uh, leave the link in the video description on where to buy these solenoids. And, uh, well, you can watch this video uh, for reference on what to do and what not to do. So, thank you for watching. Uh, share if you want and uh, hit the like button of this video if it has been useful for you. Uh, subscribe if you want more uh, printer repair videos. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave a comment. I answer every comment. Thank you for watching again and see you in the next video. Bye.